one of my favorite quotes is from the writer Edgar Watson Howe. He says there is only one thing people like that is good for them, a good night's sleep. Sleep plays a vital role in our health. We need it to survive the same way we need water, oxygen, and food. Yet about one third of Canadians struggle with chronic sleep difficulties. My name is Dr. Jody, and I'm a registered psychologist with expertise in all things related to psychological health and resilience. I'm also the CEO and founder of MyWorkplaceHealth.com, and I'm a national expert in psychological health and safety in the workplace. In this video, I'll be talking about how the challenges we have with sleep can impact us and how to improve our ability to get a full night's rest. After a long and restful sleep, we wake up feeling energized. Our mood is positive, we're focused and attentive, and we're generally more resilient against our day-to-day -day stressors. But when we're lacking in sleep, we're more likely to feel irritable, annoyed, experience changes in appetite, and be much more distracted. One of the most common sleep problems is insomnia, characterized by difficulty falling asleep, not being able to stay asleep, or early morning awakenings. The most effective treatment for insomnia is CBT, or Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, which focuses on behavioral sleep patterns and thoughts and worries, including worries about sleep. So what can we do to sleep better? Before implementing tips around your sleep hygiene, it's important to consider if there are any confounding variables that may be contributing. First, are any physical conditions or factors, including medication side effects, playing a role? If you're unsure, speak to your GP. Second, a certain amount of stress and anxiety is a normal part of life, but also one of the strongest factors that influences sleep. If you find yourself excessively thinking or ruminating at night, and that's preventing you from sleeping, it can be helpful to keep what's called a worry log. About an hour or two before bed, write down all the potential worries that may keep you up later that night. Anticipating these before bed can serve a preventative role. If you still find yourself worrying when later trying to get to sleep, get out of bed, write down your concerns, and ask yourself three questions. One, what's the evidence for this worry? Two, what's the problem to be solved? And three, most importantly, what can you do about it right now? Although this can feel difficult to do, it's highly important that staying in bed and worrying leads to an association between anxious thoughts and sleep time. And over time, your bed and bedroom becomes associated with worries and simply getting into bed can serve as a stimulus for worry thoughts to begin. Third, if you're having trouble identifying the root of your sleep problems, keep a diary for a week or two. Track your diet, work and leisure activities, level of stress, and sleep and wake times. This can be super helpful in identifying patterns and factors that are affecting your sleep that you might not otherwise be aware of. Once you've done the above, it's time to start to implement good sleep hygiene principles. And there are 10 of them. One, have a consistent fixed wake up time, even on weekends, to build a steady sleep pattern. Two, expose yourself to natural outside light upon waking. Open your blinds and have your morning cup of coffee or tea while gazing out the window, even if it's a cloudy day. Three, do not nap. Naps interfere with the restorative value of sleep later at night. If you're tired, the best strategy is to get into bed earlier that evening. Four, no caffeine afternoon. The half-life of caffeine is five hours, which means that five hours after having caffeine, 50% is still left in your body, and it takes another five hours for the caffeine to be reduced in half again to 25%. So by 10 p.m., 25% of the caffeine from the coffee you had at 12 p.m. is still in your body. Five, don't exercise before bed, about one or two hours before bed because this gets us physically activated and this is incompatible with sleep. Six, eliminate alcohol use. Even one unit of alcohol affects what's called the restorative value of our sleep. Seven, create a ritual in the hour before sleep. Have decaf tea or a warm bath, dim the lights, and put away your electronic devices. Distinguish between daytime activities associated with alertness and bedtime ones that are associated with relaxation. Eight, make your bedroom conducive to sleep. Get comfortable pillows and bedding, darken the room, and keep the temperature moderate. Nine, bed is only for two things, sleep and sex. Don't watch TV, eat, talk on the phone, argue, or use your computer while in bed. 
10. If you can't fall asleep within 15 to 20 minutes, get out of bed and don't go back to sleep until you're sleepy, not just tired. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. Please take a moment to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on social media for more helpful tips.